hello, my name is Chris Schaefer. I'm a faculty member in the Mining School of Biomedical Engineering at Cornell University. Um, and my research group, uh, one of the things we're studying is, is why brain blood flow is decreased in patients who have Alzheimer's disease. And we do this by studying uh, blood flow in the brains of mice that have been genetically engineered to get Alzheimer's. And this project has generated the, the data that Eyes on Owls is, is trying to help us analyze. We've been working on this Alzheimer's project for about six or seven years. Um, it, it started basically with a serendipitous discovery. We were uh, working on a, a, a somewhat related uh, Alzheimer's disease project where we were inducing small strokes in the brains of mice um, that get Alzheimer's disease to evaluate whether or not that made the Alzheimer pathology worse. Um, and while we were doing that, we just happened to notice that in, uh, actually an undergraduate student in the lab noticed that some of the capillaries had stalled blood flow in the Alzheimer disease mice. Uh, and we almost never saw this in non-Alzheimer or wild type mice. And, uh, and we, because of some work we had done in the past where we had uh, studied how much blood flow changes downstream when you block capillaries, when you block a single capillary, we very quickly realized that those few capillaries that we saw stalled uh, could produce a significant change in, in overall blood flow to the brain based on that other data. And so we've been chasing this problem uh, ever since. So over the last five or six years, uh, we've really made a lot of progress on, on understanding what causes reduced brain blood flow in Alzheimer's disease and how that blood flow contributes to the cognitive and other uh, symptoms of the disease. Um, so we found that a small fraction of capillaries in uh, Alzheimer's disease mice have stalled blood flow. Uh, the stall catcher's game is, is designed to help us find those stalled blood vessels in the, in the brains of these mice. But because one vessel being stalled decreases blood flow in, in downstream branches, uh, even just a few percent of vessels being stalled can lead to 20-30% decreases in overall cerebral blood flow. We've identified what, co what causes those uh, capillaries to, to become stalled. It turns out it's a white blood cell that sticks and firmly adheres uh, inside the capillary segment. When we block that adhesion and, and cause these stalls to go away, uh, we found uh, a little over a year ago that that leads to about a 30% increase in blood flow in the Alzheimer disease mice. So it brings them up to the, to the similar blood flow levels to what you find in non-Alzheimer wild type mice. And accompanying that increase in blood flow, we see um, a dramatic improvement in several measures of memory, uh, in spatial memory and working memory, uh, and an improvement in measures of depression uh, in these mice. Um, so this suggests that that decreased blood flow caused by these plugged capillaries uh, contributes to the cognitive symptoms of Alzheimer's disease, at least in these, uh, in these mouse models of the disease. Additionally, we found that if we block that capillary stalling uh, over time for about a month, uh, that there's uh, even more improvement in cognitive function um, and that it uh, improves the clearance of some species of amyloid beta, which is the small peptide that aggregates into the plaques and causes the pathological symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. So this suggests that uh, in addition to improving blood flow and potentially improving cognition, um, fixing this capillary stall problem and uh, could um, improve clearance of that molecule that causes Alzheimer's disease and maybe that could slow progression of the disease. We're testing that, uh, that hypothesis now. So the, the, the crucial sort of thing that we have to determine in each mice is uh, which capillaries are flowing and which ones are stalled. Um, uh, based on uh, three-dimensional image stacks we take of their brain using um, some advanced microscopy tools uh, in my lab. The, um, and we've tried to develop automated routines, automated uh, image processing routines, to be able to identify those, those stalled capillaries. And it's just too hard. We, can't, we haven't been able to develop a, a computer algorithm that can uh, find stalled capillaries accurately enough. But it turns out this is something that uh, that humans are very good at. It's kind of a, a spatial pattern uh, recognition problem. Humans are extremely good at it, can learn to do it in just a few minutes, uh, and, and then can, can score many of these uh, vessels, finding which ones are stalled and which ones are flowing. And this is an essential thing for, for our research. So right now, in about two hours, we can acquire um, 
the, the data that would help us understand how many capillaries are flowing or stalled in a, in a given mouse. But it takes us more than a week uh, of somebody working full time to analyze that data. Um, and that really, really slows down the work uh, to the point where to test one sort of scientific hypothesis, does blocking this molecular interaction cause the number of stalls to drop? Uh, testing a hypothesis like that could take us about a year of data analysis right now. Um, so it makes things go very slowly and, and, uh, and makes us more cautious about the kinds of things that we investigate. So with, with stall catchers and, and Eyes on Owls, the, the overall program, uh, our goal is to, is to crowdsource that, uh, that finding which capillaries are, are stalled and ask members of the public to help us with this, with this, uh, with this very time-consuming uh, data analysis piece so that we could accelerate the, the pace of this research. One of, the, one of the other reasons I'm really excited about Eyes on Owls and, and stall catchers is that uh, I think it provides a, uh, an opportunity to help engage the public uh, uh, or members of the public who are interested in, in truly authentic science. So um, at least my goal as, as stall catchers and Eyes on Owls grows and, uh, and starts to handle more and more of our, our, our data analysis, um, that I'd like this to become a, a two-way dialogue between um, between me and, and Nozomi, who, uh, who I work with, uh, and members of my lab, and members of the, of the public who are involved in, in stall catchers and, and eyes on owls. And I hope this can be a, a forum where uh, participants can, can learn about Alzheimer's disease, can learn a bit about how it is that scientific research labs operate, and how we come up with ideas, and how we move forward and make discoveries. Um, I think also it could be an opportunity for uh, members of the public to help see science uh, as those of us who are professional scientists see it, um, sort of a, a, a sometimes frustrating, sometimes exciting, sometimes collaborative, sometimes competitive, um, but uh, always very creative process for discovery. You know, that's what science is. And I think too often science is taught as kind of a collection of static facts in a book. Uh, but, th but that's, not, that's not the science that professional scientists see. For, for us, that's science history or science reference or things like that. And science is this very, very creative uh, process for discovery. So I hope that uh, by helping us uh, make discoveries, by analyzing this data and participating in forums and webcasts and phone calls and things like that, this will be an opportunity for members of the public to maybe get a little peek behind the curtain and, and see um, you know what it's like to 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 be a scientist and to uh, and to participate in this creative process for discovery, potentially. And uh, I would never discount that. I think uh, it could happen. It's always very hard to predict. There's examples, though, in, in citizen science of exactly that occurring. A, a new kind of galaxy, now called pea green galaxies, were were discovered by um, by uh, a, cr a group of by a crowd who uh, were analyzing. Uh, astronomical image data. So, um, you know, it's, uh, it's always hard to, uh, you know, we don't rely on serendipity in our scientific thinking, um, but we're always watching out for, uh, you know, those serendipitous discoveries. We're paying attention and we will absolutely do that with stall catchers and eyes on owls. We'll, we'll be we'll watching for ideas or, uh, or uh, potentially novel things that, that members of the citizen science um, cohort that are participating uh, point out. There's been a lot of serendipity actually in this project. Um, I think there's other interviews here with uh, uh, with with Tori Muse, and uh, Tori actually serendipitously discovered the molecule that uh, causes the the stalls to release and has given us the ability to be able to get rid of those stalls so that we could assess how much blood flow improves and how much cognition and uh, improves and things like that, and, and that was um, that was Tori's discovery. So right now, what we've identified is that there's a particular class of white blood cell that sticks and, and blocks capillaries. Um, but in order to to try to um, test whether or not this is also true in humans, uh, or to try to develop um, really um, brain and Alzheimer's disease targeted therapies that could be tested in humans. Uh, we need to do a lot of experiments where we explore what are some of the upstream molecular pathways that are causing those white blood cells to stick to, to capillaries. And the way we'll do that is we'll, we'll have mice that will we'll give a drug or a pharmacological compound that 
blocks the activity of a particular enzyme or receptor or enhances the activity of one. Or we'll take mice that are missing a certain protein that's been eliminated from their genome and we'll uh, cross them with the Alzheimer disease mice. And in all of these animals, what we then need to do is look to see whether or not that intervention, whether adding that drug that blocked a particular receptor or, uh, or looking at a mouse that lacks it, uh, whether or not that changed the, the number of stalls and, and by how much. Um, and we have, we have uh, uh, a lot of these experiments uh, lined up that we're ready to do. We know um, which molecular pathways we would like to test. Um, but but as, I, as I said earlier, right now for us to test one of those pathways, it's almost a year of data analysis. Uh, and so at, at this point, we, we're, uh, our plan is to rely on stall catchers and eyes on else uh, to help us uh, analyze all that data, which we're actually starting to take right now. So the, the first research question we'd like to answer using stall catchers, um, uh, we, we, uh, our collaborator, Constantino Iadicola at Weill Cornell Medical College has identified a molecular pathway um, in endothelial cells that seems to be involved in causing dysfunction in those cells. Endothelial cells are the cells that line uh, the blood vessels. And he's identified a molecular pathway where this amyloid beta molecule that causes Alzheimer's disease triggers a sequence of molecular events in the endothelial cells that causes them to be um, dysfunctional and to, to not do their job right. Um, and we, we, we believe that that same molecular pathway is likely responsible for causing the, uh, for driving the adhesion of white blood cells to those endothelial cells. Um, so the first thing we'd like to do is to test that idea. Um, and the way we'll do it is we'll, we'll give uh, drugs that interfere at several different places along that molecular pathway and evaluate whether at each one of those, those places the, uh, the stalls go down. If we're right, if that is indeed the molecular pathway that's involved, that would then set the stage to say where in that molecular pathway would be the cleanest place to intervene, um, where we would hope to have minimal side effects and maximal efficacy in terms of of blocking the, the capillary stall phenomena. And then there would be a, a preclinical drug development program to try to identify compounds that, that look like they would work and that could move forward uh, later with clinical trials. So uh, my hope is that we all profit uh, from this research. Um, our goal here is to, is to uh, identify the molecular and cellular mechanisms that cause decreased brain blood flow in Alzheimer's disease so that there could be um, you know, so that could lead to the development of, of compounds that uh, help treat this devastating disease. So uh, my background and training is in, is in physics. As a graduate student, I studied how very short pulses of light interact with matter. Um, as, a, as an undergraduate, I actually worked in a lab trying to develop the lasers that produce those very short pulses of light. Uh, Toward the end of my graduate career, there was uh, an application of, this, uh, of these, these lasers that I thought would be interesting in biology. Namely, we figured out how to make, uh, make what you can think of as a laser scalpel that can cut with micron scale precision, so uh, about one one hundredth the diameter of a human hair. And it can make those cuts down inside of a tissue without affecting the things above it. And we thought this could be a very valuable tool for biomedical research. We could use it to go and kill individual cells or injure things in a very controlled way uh, to model disease states or to, uh, or to um, kind of dissect the, the function of, of, uh, of tissues and, and cells within them. Uh, so I, I uh, sort of transitioned at the, at a post, at the postdoc level. Uh, I joined a lab that was kind of split between neuroscience and, uh, and physics, David Kleinfeld's lab at the University of California, San Diego. Uh, and there we developed the use of this uh, laser scalpel to uh, create small strokes uh, in the brains of rodents to be, able to, to be able to try to study how the occlusion or hemorrhage of small blood vessels impacts the health or function of nearby brain cells. And it was actually in, in that work done together with Nozomi Nishimura, uh, who I jointly run a lab with now, uh, where we caused individual capillaries to clot and we studied how much that changed the blood flow in downstream capillary networks. And it was actually that knowledge, knowing how much a single capillary being blocked affects downstream blood flow, that uh, that's probably what spurred us to chase these very small number of capillaries being stalled that we found in the Alzheimer models 
because we, we knew that even one capillary stall can impact the flow in many downstream vessels. And so maybe we were maybe a little early to understand that even a few percent of capillary stall could, could impact blood flow more broadly. Uh, but, but getting back to the story of my academic uh, sort of background, um, so coming out of David Kleinfeld's lab when I moved to Cornell as a, as a faculty member, we started a lab where, where much of what we were doing was following up on that work that Nozomi and I had done in, in David's lab, trying to study how small strokes and uh, blood flow changes drive neurodegenerative disease. And we started this project to try to see if, if inducing small strokes made Alzheimer's disease worse. And it was serendipitously when looking into the brains of some of these Alzheimer mice that we then discovered this capillary stalling phenomenon. I really, again, have, have sort of two parallel hopes for this project. One is that um, it is really that, the, that eyes on owls and stall catchers can help us, uh, help us increase the tempo and the pace of this research so that we're able to get to uh, a deeper level of understanding of the molecular and cellular causes of this phenomena, this capillary stalling phenomenon in Alzheimer's disease, and a deeper understanding of the consequences of it for disease progression and cognitive function. Um, so, so one hope is, is accelerating our work so that, so that we can move forward toward treatments that would try to, um, to, to mitigate this part of the, the disease in humans. But my other hope for this is, is again, that this can become a, a platform that helps uh, engage interested members of the public in, in, the, in the conduct of authentic science, like really trying to, uh, to get a peek behind the curtain at what it's like to be a professional scientist and to learn a bit about science as, as a creative process for discovery. I have, uh, I have one uh, citizen science project that is my absolute favorite. And uh, I'll be uh, totally self-promotional here and say that that's stall catchers.